This is absolutely insane. I work with about 30 shark fishermen here and I didn't realise that more than half of them have interacted with white sharks at some point. And the most recent one was two years ago. They've got these insane teeth that are like massive and just picturing the size of this white shark, I can't. I just feel like the local knowledge that we're getting from them is insane. And it's always about white sharks chasing tuna or them not being able to catch it because it's too big. For me, it's like a massive eye-opener. It's just like how many white sharks are coming into Indonesia and how often they're interacting with them. Welcome back. Hey, Craig. All right. How many white sharks did you see while I was gone? Sorry, I didn't see any. <laughs> I apologize. The fishermen have seen white sharks in Indonesia, oh, yes. Incredible. Yeah. Basically, I think we're on the right track. The biggest thing is the prey. So we've got to follow the tuna. If we follow the elephant tuna, then hopefully we'll find the great white. But it's, it's quite triangular, but it's a little narrow still. So this is from the bottom jaw of the white shark. Extracting DNA from this tooth might help us determine the where. Where are they coming from? Craig sends the tooth for analysis. And with the new information from the fisherman, changes tactics. Maddie told me these fishermen were working later in the day. They're fishing for yellowfin tuna. And this white shark came up after the yellowfin tuna, and that's when they captured it. Indonesia is home to the most prolific tuna grounds in the world. Huge schools of yellow fins gather in deep water off the coast. The fish can grow up to six feet long and weigh over 400 pounds. Are white sharks making the journey to Indonesia to gorge on them? The white sharks could be following this ridge all the way to Moratai due to the beneficial food resources that are here. They could be feasting on these yellowfin tuna. But there's just one massive problem. The tuna school in the open ocean. And the odds of stumbling on a great white out there are next to zero. I think that means we have to change our approach. We need to make our way into deeper water. We have to look for a massive yellowfin tuna school. And if we find it, it's going to dramatically increase our chances at finding Indonesian white sharks. Knowing how hard it is to track down tuna, Craig builds a secret weapon to act as his own school of tuna and bring the white sharks to him. A supersized chumming machine. To test it, they head six hours offshore. What is this thing? We're going to be dripping yellowfin tuna oil into the water a drip maybe every second, every two seconds, and creating this continuous slick that's going to go on for miles. So if there's any sharks swimming around at the surface, hopefully it brings them right in. So we're going to chum all day, all night? All day, all night, and the next day. In the open ocean, strong currents can quickly clear the water of traditional chumming techniques that favor one quick dump of fish guts, blood, and fish oil. Craig's device will act like an IV for the ocean regulating a slow release of oil and creating a slick that will stretch upwards of 100 miles, drawing any passing shark straight to the boat. All right, it flows. Nice. beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's like chunky at the end. Look at that. There we go. All right, let's just send it on its way. Next step. Oh, that stinks. We gotta make this really bloody in the stomach here. You can uh. see our blood pouring out. Let's uh, turn on the camera. In three, two, one. Our offshore chumming has begun. Ooh, it's a lot of blood. Yep. That's good. Seven o'clock. We're gonna get a shark at 8.36 a.m. Put money on it? Five bucks. OK, you're on. What do you think? 8.20. All right. My time is quickly approaching. It's got to happen. Craig, 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 Craig. No, that looked like a shock. What? It's on time. Yeah, yeah. Shark! 
Let's get the drone. Let's, let's go higher up so we can get a better vantage point. Come on. We got to get in and shake hey, hands. I think it got the tuna or bit it. It looks it looks separated. It splashed out the water. There's a shark around the boat right now. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it's too clear. Oh, you see it? I see something. So, so, so there's two animals. We have two sharks around the boat. So this is super exciting. It's about three hours and 45 minutes in. We've had this oil slick going continuously and a shark came up at the tuna hang bait. Exactly what we were hoping for. Three hours and 45 minutes and we got a result. Oh, Craig. Holy <laughs> oh. holy, <laughs> holy crap. That is awesome. Okay, the this is a big animal. Gone. You can see some scrape marks right here. Fairly large impressions. Um, this is a monster shark. But look like right here, this is one tooth impression right here. Look. It's crazy. It's, it's bigger than the width of my thumb. Okay, and so there's a few species out here that I think can actually make an impression like that. Tiger? Right? No, a tiger wouldn't have done It could have been a tiger, but, but the way it behaved at the surface, one vertical approach, like no joke, this, this was... This, Great white behavior. This was, this was white shark behavior. That shark just took one swipe at that bait, and that was it, cut it in half. This could be a great white shark. White sharks are ambush predators, using their coloring to stay hidden at depth while searching for prey at the surface. When the moment is right, they attack with ferocious speed, often catapulting out of the water. If there is a white shark down there, it's most likely down in very deep water, so we have to find a way to lure it up to the surface. To bring the white sharks up from the depths, Craig decides to do the unthinkable. Madison and I are gonna hold on to a rope 15 feet down with tuna in our hands and just start chumming. We wanna create a slick that sinks down into the deeper water and hopefully brings those massive, great white sharks right up to the surface. If we see one and catch it, and if we're lucky, we'll put a spot tag in it, a satellite tag, and see exactly where the shark goes and where it potentially is from. Okay, I don't know what exactly to do about this because one of us should have a camera in case a shark comes in close, but we should both have tuna. We'll be in separate lines. Uh, you need your camera anyway. You need something to fend the sharks off. It's in all seriousness, yeah. right? Everyone says, when, you come on, when I come on these trips, oh, you're so lucky you get to go on vacation to all these places. I'm not on vacation right now. I'm about to get in the water with really motivated sharks out in the middle of the open ocean in a place where I've never been. So this is terrifying. Yeah, got you there, Maddie. And we know that massive search the rounds, so let's keep our eyes open, let's get this job done, and hopefully that big white shark shows up. I think this is either the coolest thing we've done or the dumbest. Keep your eyes open, I want your back. Let's shave this fish and let's hope something shows up. Copy that, Craig, especially with that bait in the water. Keep those eyes peeled.
The amped up shark comes after Craig's tuna. Holy <laughs> no! That was insane. That was one of the sketchiest things I've ever done. It's an enjoyable afternoon activity. <laughs> Maddie, we're pushing it. That was crazy. Oh, oh my gosh, look. It's my sunset up here. Woo. Oh my gosh. So, out of all the dumb I've done, Like, I'm a little disappointed right now. I was hoping we'd see like a big great white down below, but that was also a very intimidating dive. A shark like that charging me in this type of water. Like, it was time to get out. To ID their attacker, Craig and Maddie check the footage from the hanging tuna rig. All right, Maddie, moment of truth. Let's see if that camera actually recorded whatever that thing was. That tuna was massive, so whatever took it was massive. Come on. Come on. I bet you we didn't get it. Come on, come on. Oh, oh, here it is, right here, right here. Yeah. <gasps> oh my gosh. Look at this animal, it's huge. Pointy snout. This is a massive silky shark. Silkies are fearless hunters. Growing up to 10 feet long, these oceanic predators are famous for their speed and aggression. Look at it look, devour the tuna. Look at the size of this thing. Yeah, clearly we're using the right bait. We're using the right bait. This and is we're, such a cool we shot. We got so close. Look at the size of this animal. Absolutely incredible. I think there's really something to these yellowfin tuna. I think these sharks offshore are really keying in on them. It's also proof that we need to be careful when we're floating around out there. No, Maddie, really good work. This was tiring. We didn't waste a second. We made it happen. Got a shot. 